One of the cool new features of BCG coming in 5.7 is Polygon 2D. Now, what is it and how does it work? Well, I want to show you guys everything I've learned about it, how to use it, how to set it up. And while it is still currently in preview and things might change, I think most of it is there. If something changes down the line, I'll make sure to create a follow up video. But let me teach you everything I know about Polygon 2D. And that, of course, starts with the fact that we do need to make sure BCG is turned on. By default, it is still not enabled. So you do need to turn on the procedural content generation framework. It still says beta, but that's because we're still in the preview version. Whether or not this is enabled by default once 5.7 fully comes out will remain to be seen. But once you have enabled it and restart your engine, we can get started. For this, I'm going to need two things. One of them is a blueprint class actor, and this is going to be just a simple spline. Inside of this blueprint actor, I'm just going to add a simple spline component and then just drag it out a bit and set it to be a closed loop in the detail panel. That's really all I need on this one. So I'll go ahead and save it. And then I can go ahead and just drag it out into the world. Now I'll drag out one and then I'll go to the detail panel and search for tag and I'll add a tag called one. One, and another one, I'll duplicate the spline, and the other one will be of tag two. This way I just know we have two different ones. One is the main and one is the secondary. And to make it easier to tell apart, I'm gonna select the main one, select the spline component, and then scroll down to the editor section and editor spline unselected color. I'm gonna change that to be green. And for the second one, same thing, spline, change the editor color to be something like light blue. So at a glance, we can immediately tell which one is which. And to make it a little bit Bit easier to see. I'm going to change the floor color here. So basically now we have two splines with two different tags that we can use and they're very easily distinguishable. Great. With that, let's go ahead and make our PCG graph by going to PCG, PCG graph. Let's create an empty graph and this is going to be our PCG underscore polygon 2D. And I'll go ahead and just drag this into the world. It can be anywhere because we're going to be using the splines to actually control everything. And with that, let's open it up. So there are a few polygon 2D nodes. If I right click and search for polygon, you'll see there's create polygon 2D. So Surface from Polygon 2D, Offset Polygon, and Polygon Operation. Now, whenever I use a new one of these, I'll make sure to add a timestamp for it for the video so you can jump immediately to that node to see how that node operates. But just keep in mind that they do all work together, so you should still be aware of kind of the general thing and how to use them all as one, basically. We're going to get started with the Create Polygon 2D. Now, this node takes an input of concrete data. Concrete data, in our case, is going to be our spline. So I'm going to right click and search for Get Spline Data. And on the spline data, I'm going to change actor filter from self to be all world actors and by tag. And the tag here is going to be one. I'm going to turn on select multiple. And I'm actually going to duplicate this and set up the other one to say use tag two. So if I wanted to, I can already use the get spline data and just plug that in right into Polygon 2D. And by pressing D on the node and selecting it from the bottom left corner here. And if I zoom in all the way in here, you will see that well, there's a little tiny little cubes all around the edge here, equidistance apart. But it's not very controllable. So instead of this, what you want to do most likely is from the get spline data, search for a spline sampler. And here we can plug that all the way through. And on here, instead of subdivision, we'll change it to distance. And let's change our distance increment to something like 10. And now if I debug the create polygon 2D, you will see there's our little cubes 10 units apart. Fantastic. So now we can control this. Great. Now I want to show one little thing, which is is what happens when you do on interior. If you were to change the spline sampler to on interior, it will work with a caveat. So it's on interior, nothing else has changed. If I go up, you will see we now have all the same points, but on the inside. Now, one thing to note is if I press A on here and we take a look at this data viewport, you really can see what's going on, which in our case is it is creating a continuous spline. And then there's this diagonal. This diagonal connects the first and the last point. Now, this is important important because while we don't see it in this one, I have seen it where it starts creating points just like it is here in this grid from the first one to the last one. So if you see a diagonal line here, that is why you're creating it from an interior shape. Don't worry though, if you need interiors, you can get a nice clean interior down the line. There's a node for it, so you don't need to use on interior for this part. So because of that, I will change it back to on spline of a distance. So cool, we have a polygon 2D. It is considered a polygon. It is a big rectangle. So now we need to use it with something. Well, one of the awesome nodes is polygon operation. That's where we can have some real fun. Now I'm going to go through all of the operations here. We have union, difference, intersections, pairwise intersections, inner intersection, exclusive or, and cut with paths. And I'll explain everything I have figured out here. We'll start with union. So union is relatively simple. The way it works is you plug in a create polygon 2D node and any other nodes that you need. Let's 
let's go ahead and grab the path two ones and let's plug them in. You see it only has one input because it all go in here. And when I debug it, you'll see we have points along here and points along here. Now it is a little difficult to see. So what I'm going to do is on the spline samplers, I'm going to change the distance increment to 100. And on the polygon operation, instead of debugging extents, I'm going to debug absolute. And that way we can kind of see it nice and large here. So here we have the two splines. If I click on the actual polygon 2D, it is just part of the volume as normal. But if I go ahead and select a spline 2, let's move it over a little bit. You will see that it is doing a union. So effectively, the parts that are overlapping effectively get removed and it becomes a single shape. And because I'm doing select multiple, I can hold alt and make more copies and I can just do a union any way I'd like. I can have a little cutout there. So this is awesome. So that is union. It takes everything you've plugged in and puts them together. And to make it even easier so we don't have to keep debugging this, let's go ahead and set up a base setup here where we can just go ahead and spawn cubes. From here, I'm just going to drag out, use a transform points node. I'm going to scale the points to be something like 0.5 and then I'm going to use a static mesh spawner and I'm just going to add a simple one meter cube here. And there we go. So we can now really see there's our cubes and you can see it all working together. Fantastic. So this has been union. So what I'm going to do is take this, duplicate it over and just comment this one to be union and detach it. On the second one, let's look at difference. Our difference takes a second input. Basically from the first one, cut everything out. So if we plug our two splines into the clip polygons, you will see from our original circle here, the second spline here is cutting things out. So if I go ahead and just make some more, you'll see you will again cut things out so you can make kind of any shape you want using these splines and you can overlay them as much as you want just like so very nice you can get a nice unique shape here the next one down is intersection intersection as you might imagine is just an intersection node wherever they intersect between the first input and the clip polygons it will work like so so if i go ahead and duplicate this and bring it over you'll see the green is overlapping the blue all over here it basically creates an outline if i go ahead and duplicate the green one the green's original spline one i can go ahead and put it here i can combine it but you can see here it doesn't merge them because each green one is separate and each blue one's cutting out from each green one but that doesn't mean that the green ones are cutting out from each other so when you overlay them you get both sets but if you're not overlapping you get something like this now i want to point something out relatively early on and that is this spacing here the spacing on this edge here is from this green spline but these edges are from the blue spline which means if I change the spline sampler on tag two here from 100 to 50, you will see that we adjust just those segments from the blue splines. So you can have a different spacing for one section versus the other, which is why the spline sampler spacing and everything like that is important. I'll keep it consistent at 100 for convenience. It looks a little bit nicer, but just be aware if you want one of the sections, like the main shape to be one density and the cutouts to be another, you can do that. Now, after intersection is pairwise intersection. And right now we're looking at a regular intersection. This is how it works, right? Every blue is merged together. But if I was to change you to pairwise intersection while you're looking here you'll see that we get the original pieces here back so they don't merge within the green original input the green ones will still do the same thing as before as with regular intersection but the blue ones again pairwise means you retain these connections they don't become one and regular intersections means they are removed and they become basically a union so slight difference depending on your use case you might want to use one versus the other the next one we have is the inner intersection inner intersection only takes one input now with only just the tag one plugged into here you will see nothing if nothing is overlapping but if i overlap the two green ones you will see we basically get a combination of the two green ones and i can add more and you'll see it is basically saying hey all of these have to overlap where do they all overlap if one of them is not overlapping you get nothing every single green one now has to overlap and the result of all of their overlaps is the only thing you get you can plug in for example the blue splines as well you have multiple in here but again everything disappears because the blue ones are not overlapping and when i make them all overlap again this is the section that overlaps every single one of them and that is the one that actually gets retained in the end so if you want to make sure that something is overlapping absolutely 100 of everything at least somewhere this is where you do it after in our intersections we have an exclusive or so this one takes a second input again and we'll plug in the blue tag two ones into clip polygons and you'll see here we have just the two blue ones if i take these 
two blue ones here and I put them next to each other, they will go ahead and merge. And if I take the green ones and move them together, they will not. So effectively, you can have as many of these green ones as you want, but they will never merge with anything because they are in the first input. And the ones in the second input here are merging together like a regular union. So these always get merged into one shape and these do not. And then in the end, it all gets combined and you have one nice result. And the final one we have here is cut with paths, which sounds a little different and is the only one that doesn't take two sets of polygons. The second one that it takes is just splines. Let's plug the splines right in. So you have the green splines in in and the blue two splines in the clip paths. So here's the green spline. And if I bring the blue one over, you will see it is just creating a path basically on the inside here, wherever it overlaps. It is not going to cut out anything between the paths, but it's basically creating a connection wherever it is overlapping. So this is cut with paths. If you think about it as a giant area and you're just making a little additional spline that goes through it, but it's still masked by that original shape. And if I have multiple green ones here, they are separate. They do not become a union shape. So each green one then gets cut through again, as you see. So if you, for example, wanted to have a union here between the two green shapes before doing this, you would just need to do multiple operations. First do a union, and then do the paths. But that's all of them that we've gone through. Again, we've used pretty much the same setup for all of them. All I've done is change the polygon operation here, except for the last one, which needs a specific clip paths versus a polygon. So you can see how this node is extremely powerful. But there are a few nodes that take this even further. If I go ahead and right click and search for polygon again, we can look into offset polygon. Now offset polygon is quite interesting. If I go ahead and on this cut with paths one, let's go ahead and use that and I'll just duplicate this and I'll rename it to offset polygon here. I'll drop an offset polygon after this polygon operation and then it's going to go back into here as before. So it'll be just like this. Now what does offset polygon do? In the offset polygons you have an option for offset, open and close. Of course you have the option to maintain maintain the metadata and all that good stuff. And you have an offset of 100 by default. Now what's going to happen to the paths? Well it looks like a mess right now but maybe at this mess you can already see kind of what's happening. If I just change this offset now while you're looking at it to 50, 20, to 0, you will see that the paths are actually going and splitting into two sets of points here. So whatever you have a spline and you want points on the left and on the right, it will just do that for you now, which is freaking amazing. Now, I want to point out that the ones on the inside of the area get split into two, while the ones on the outside here, the boundary just gets pushed out. They do not create two shapes here. I'll go ahead and remove a couple of these so you can really see it much easier with one intersection here. So you can see the outer ones, if I change this to 20, it goes further in, 0, 50, 100. It is going ahead and adjusting the path here and adjusting these to be pushed out as well, but it does not create a path. And this works for any of the ones we saw previously. If you ever have a spline or these points going inside of a closed area, it will be able to do this. If it is not a closed area, then it will not. What I mean is if I go ahead and just take this offset polygon and take it to our union setup all the way at the beginning here and plug that in instead. As you see, we don't have any double paths and I can change the offset and it will work. It'll offset all the points. I can even do negative to push them in, but it will not create the two sets because there's nothing going inside of the polygon volume basically. So, okay, this is the offset. So let's change the offset to open. Well, then you get this. So this is the cut with paths mode. And you can see when it's default, when it's disabled, is just the normal cut with paths. If I enable it with open, it cuts out, but I don't fully have grasped what it's doing. If this is 250, 200, 150, 120, 120. So it's clearly cutting out from the points of con the connection points here, but it's only cutting out in this direction, not in both directions. So I don't fully understand the open yet. And the same thing is with close. If I set it to close, so this is at 100, this is at 0, 200, 500, 1000. You can see, again, you're getting changes here. 5000, 0. There are a few overlapping points here, and at a higher value, those disappeared. But what is it actually doing under the hood and how that all functions? I haven't fully understood. The main one, offset, works fine. So hopefully once I actually get more experience with this, I'll be able to tell you guys what open and close specifically do on the offset polygon. Like I can tell that it removes points, but I haven't understood 
the logic of it yet, basically. If any of you guys have figured it out just from seeing this or trying it for yourself, please let us know in the comments below, share with the community so we can all learn and improve. But that takes care of the offset polygon. The last node we have here under polygon is the create surface from polygon 2D. For demonstration of the create surface from polygon 2D, I'm going to go to the one that's different. And just like before, I'm going to plug it in after polygon operation right in here. And I'll plug in this static mesh spawner so we can see everything. And you can see the blue one again is removing from the green one. But now we're outputting concrete data of a type of surface. So what we can do is use a surface sampler, as you might imagine. Now from a surface sampler, I'm going to go ahead and plug that into our transform points. But I'm going to customize the surface sampler first because the points per squared meter is quite low. Let's make that one. And just like that, we now have a basically on interior section of these points just like that. So that's why I said early on, you don't need to sample on interior because of this node. We can, of course, change the extents, the point information, everything, because it is just a surface sampler. And this will work with absolutely everything. So we just go ahead and start cutting things out. And you can see the interior gets removed. I can reduce the amount of points, of course, if I so wish. But once you go very high, it basically creates a grid. Otherwise, it is just like the landscape. It is going to be quite random in its point placement during this area. This is one and point two. So it's really cool that the interior effectively works as a perfect grid, if you so wish, or just randomness, which is quite handy a lot of times for kind of a lot of stuff. But those are all the main Polygon 2D nodes. And honestly, they're awesome. It allows for a lot of control for many of the stuff. Now, as always, I'm going to have this project available on my Patreon, where you can join these wonderful people here who support what I do. It really means a lot. And if you'd like to join the community, the link to the Discord and everything will be down below. And while this stuff is really cool, there is technically a more powerful version of all of this built into PCG EX. And I've done a video that, that has pretty much all of this functionality plus more. And for that, you can check out this video right over here if you want an even more advanced system.